Welcome young caravans, my name is OG and we are watching InfoBuds. Today we are going to be taking a look at how you can recreate the mirror cave effect from The Last Jedi. Now I'm a total Star Wars fan and I've been wondering how to do this effect for a very long time now. It was just the other day I thought to search it up on YouTube to find lessons on it and I was shocked when I found none. So here's a tutorial for you if you're just wondering how you can achieve this effect without having to do advanced CGI. Take a look at what we'll be making. It isn't that exact effect and it isn't as original but it looks great and I can't wait to get started. Let's jump right in. Wondershare Filmora. It's an amazing video editor with a great user interface that can be used to let your imagination run wild. There'll be a link in the description of this video leading you to its official site so you can download it. After you've set that all up, then follow along with me and I'll show you how. Make a new project, then import the videos that you'll be using. These will be videos that you've shot yourself, and you'll need two to be exact. Like I said before, we are going to be recreating the last Jedi mirror cave effect from the place where it touched the mirror to the place where there were a line of rays. So I've shot two videos like that, drag and drop them onto the timeline. As you can see here, I've done these without my glasses. It just helps to sell the effect more faster because it would seem very fake with the light shining in, especially if you have a hard light source in front of you such as a ring light. I also did this in front of a green screen, so I could put a cave background behind myself. Let me go ahead and trim out the parts I don't need. I recommend you pause this video and do this as well. Now double click on your video and tick in the chroma key option. Then increase the offset slowly. The green should start to disappear. You could turn it all the way up and if you start to see transparency in places such as your hair, then turn edge thickness up slightly. I went with 2.4% and turn the edge feather up as well for a number of 2%. If you still see some green in your video in places that you don't want them to be, such as on your subject, then you have a problem with the lighting of your video. But if you have green left over in your video such as mine in the corner or edges, then you don't have to worry. Click on the effects tab, then search up image mask. Once you find this effect, drag and drop it onto your video clip. To see what image mask has done, you will need to drag some sort of background under your video. So import your desired background. You can double click on your media library or drag and drop your image from File Explorer into Filmora. That's what I'm going to do. As you can see, I've gone with this cave background I found on the internet. It took me quite a while to find what I needed. You'd have to look for a cave background with a cave wall, so we can use that as a mirror. Now move your video a track up. Then drag and drop your background underneath it. What I'm going to do for my background however, is that I'm going to position it to the left, so that the cave wall collides with my hand. And just for reality's sake, I'm going to scale the background up as well. Once you're satisfied where everything is, double click on your video and scroll down until you see video effects. Expand it, and now you'll see image mask properties. I'm just going to expand this window up so you can see it clearly. You can do this by dragging the timeline section downwards. Now choose a preset mask that might fit your video. This now depends on where the green on your video is. To make the image mask invisible, uncheck it over here. My video has got green on the right side of the screen and just a tad bit on the left as well. So that's why I'm going to choose this image mask with the two rectangles on each side. This seems to have done the job perfectly. You can adjust your settings as well, like where you want your mask to display and how wide and tall you want it to be. 
I'm going to decrease the width a little. Once you do this, play your video back to make sure your hand doesn't get clipped out. And before we move any further, save your project. Then save your project as. The next logical step would be to make the reflection of the mirror. It's a quite tedious process, but it's not that hard. Delete the second video but keep the rest. Then duplicate the first video onto the second track. Then double click on your duplicated video and expand the transform section. We do want to flip it, so click the first option here. The reason why we kept the first video is because we need a guide for the reflection. Just remember now that your video on the second track is your reflection. Move it so that the hands touch each other, then rotate it to match the angle of the reflection. Once you've got it where you want it, delete the video on the first track. Soon after that's done, make three new tracks and move your video up to the fourth one. Take this time now to adjust the color of your video. Double click on it and change your color settings by heading onto the color tab. Lower the contrast down to a level of minus 100 and saturation down to a level of minus 68. Then increase your brightness to a reasonable level. I just went with 50. Now it's time to add the broken mirror effect. You need to have a broken mirror overlay. You can find dozens of these on the internet. Find one preferably with lots of fractures. Once you do this, open it up in a photo editor. In my case, I'll be using Photoshop. Why Photoshop? Well, we need to make green fills in our fractures. After Photoshop's loaded up with your overlay, select the fill tool and choose a nice chroma green color. Then fill a few parts of your fracture out. Export your image and then drag and drop it into Filmora. Then move your video over up a track. After that, drag and drop your green screen overlay into the timeline over the cave background. The most important thing you would want to do now is to align your image onto the cave wall. You can scale it, rotate it and do whatever you want to make it seem real. Then select your overlay and head on to the compositing section. Expand it and set the blended mode to screen. Once you do this, click on the camera icon to snapshot your video. Make sure your video is invisible. Click that eye icon to do this. Then once you snapshot your canvas, delete the overlay and move your background a track down. Then drag in your snapshot over that. It's time now to chroma key your snapshot. Select the snapshot and double click it. Then take in chroma key, leave the offset as is and tolerance, then change the edge thickness. Soon after this, copy and paste your video, making sure that it's now right underneath your snapshot and your background. Scale the video up and then position it so that we can see the subject's face. Then change its opacity down. Change the duration of the snapshot and background to fit the duration of the two videos. Export this file by clicking on the export button. Change the name of this video and remember the save location, then export it. This part of the video editing process is what you call bouncing, where you make a separate project and then export it to use in your main project. Bouncing is really useful if you have multiple chroma keys and also really handy to save loads of time. After it has exported, open up your previous project. Once that's loaded up, delete your background and import your bounce. Then drag and drop it underneath your first video. To set this effect however, scale your video up and again make sure both hands are touching each other. And when they do, the second video should show up immediately. If there is a few seconds of the bounce and video, then split and delete them. Now drag and drop another key background underneath your second video. If you end up having black bars on either side of them, then right click on your background in the timeline and select crop to fit. Make sure you play your video over so that your hand doesn't get clipped out like mine. If it does clip, then adjust the image mask settings. 
Now duplicate the video twice on the upper tracks and then lock them. Finally, double click on your video on the third track and scale it down and move it to the left side of the screen. Then lock the track and unlock the track above it. Move it and scale it and do exactly that for the clip above it. If you play it over now, we can see the videos playing together, right? That's not how the effect in The Last Jedi went. As a matter of fact, each video, except the first one, should be a couple frames late to play. And how would we do that without not showing the video? Well, that can be easily achieved by using the freeze frame tool. Position your playhead right over every video's first frame. Then click on the video on track 4 and then hit the keys Alt F. Do the same for the clip above it. Remember to unlock it or you won't be able to do so. Now without moving your playhead position, press the keys Shift and then the left arrow on your keyboard. After you've done this, drag the freeze frame area there on your playhead. Do this once again and do the same for your video on track 5. Play your video back and you'll see some resemblance to the mirror cave effect. If you think the video starts playing too late, then adjust the freeze frame level to a shorter frame. Now in this video, I snapped my finger twice. And as you might remember in The Last Jedi, when Rey did that, her snap got echoed. That's what we'd want to do. So find a snap sound that you'd want to use. In this case, I recorded a snap sound of my own using the microphone on my computer. If you want to do that, then under the record drop down, click on record voiceover. Since I've already done it, I'll import my audio file and trim out the unnecessary parts. Once you've done this, align your audio right to the place where you snapped your fingers for the first time. Copy this clip over twice for the other two tracks, just like so, and make sure they are aligned properly. Now double click on the first snap, and set its audio dB level to minus 1. Then click on the second snap and set its level to 5, and the last snap should be at 10. Since I snapped my fingers twice here, I'm going to copy the whole lot and do this again. The very last thing for you to do would be to add the cave ambience and the small transition effect. You can find these type of effects on YouTube by using the keyword no copyright. Once you've found these files, import them into Filmora, then drag and drop them onto the timeline. If you don't want the video, which we obviously don't need, then press the keys Ctrl Alt D. Then delete the video and trim out the audio. Once you've done this for both of your clips, place the ambience in the audio track to cover the whole scene. And for the transition, place it just like this. And last but not least, let's add lots and change the colors of your videos to make them fit into the cold environment. Double click on your cave background and then click on color tab. Change the temperature all the way down and copy the values to all your video clips. Make sure that you add the color temperature to your first cave background as well. And there you have it, you've got the mirror cave effect. Like I said, it's not original but it's a remake and you can take this to the next level. To export your video, click on the button export. Change the name of your video and remember the save location. Then click on the button export in the dialog box and then wait for it to export. Once it's done, click on the button find target and wait for file explorer to open up. Now enjoy your results.
And there you have it guys, it's a mirror cave effect from The Last Jedi. Are you going to create your very own? If you are, then share it with us in the comments. We would love to see what you've done. I hope you learned something new and you got what you were looking for. Give this video a like and send us a comment down below telling us how well I told this lesson. It will help Informix to improve its content in the very future. Point that out to us and we'll have a look at it. And if you already haven't, don't forget to subscribe to Infobits, where we teach subjects ranging around photo editing, audio editing, and video editing. Plus, even more in the future, we post frequently. And to be in the know of our latest videos, hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on anything we have to offer. And if you don't see what you're looking for on our channel, then send us a comment in one of our videos and we'll definitely take a look. May the force always be with you. This was Audrey and you were watching Infobids. I'll see you guys in another spectacular video.